there's always been some charm to an old, beige 90s tower. Even machines that were manufactured years before I was born, I absolutely love them. And in today's video, it's time to bring back one of these machines, and restore it back to its former glory. So let's start off with a little backstory behind this machine. Good friend and patron of mine Mike, otherwise known as the Geekster, found this machine up for sale, and actually donated it to the channel, on the premise that I go and pick it up. So after an hour drive there and back from the cellar, I was now in possession of this glorious Pentium 2 equipped Dell Dimension. Running through the specs, it's clear that this system has definitely had a few extra upgrades thrown in at some point, as looking at Dell's website through the Wayback Machine, it would have come stock with 128MB of SD RAM, a 16MB NVIDIA TNT GPU, and a Turtle Beach Montego 2 sound card, and would have also come with a single CD reader, but it's now running 256MB of RAM, with a 64MB NVIDIA MX400 GPU, and a Sound Blaster Live sound card with two 5 and a quarter inch drives, a CD and DVD reader respectively. So to restore this thing we're going to have to address some of the issues, which I'll quickly run through now. It's missing a hard drive, needs a new CMOS battery, and well, generally needs a bit of a clean on the inside and the outside. So taking the Dell outside, it's time to give it a proper restoration. Now, while normally with other computers I disassemble the whole machine so I can properly clean the case, I wanted to keep some of the originality in the system, if that makes any sense. So I tried to remove as little as I could and work around that. I started by giving the outside a general wipe down, which removed a lot of the grime and dirt that had built up over the past 20 years. But it was clear that some of the black marks on the case had embedded themselves pretty well. At first, I tried WD-40, which normally works pretty well with some lighter scratches, but it was clear that these were pretty deep into the plastic. So I whacked out the Astonish kitchen and oven cleaner, which actually worked wonders, and with a bit of scrubbing, began to remove these marks. While removing the front panel, it became apparent to me that there was a large crack in it, so I used a small amount of superglue just to join the pieces back together. There was some dust wedged into some small crevices of the front panel, which was easily brushed away. And after that I actually moved on to switching the DVD and CD drives around, because I'm a huge OCD freak, and I thought the Yamaha branded drive would look better on top. I also moved the zip drive up by one slot for the same reason. Next, I removed the various PCI expansion cards just to give them a quick cleanup. And while I was there, I decided to swap out the MX400 card that was in there with another MX400, which is in pretty much brand new condition, which I bought not too long ago just as a spare part, as it only cost me £3.50. Next, after reinstalling all the cards, I removed the slot-loaded Pentium 2 to give it a quick clean, which presented us with the massive heatsink of the CPU. The rear fan was removed to clean out, which presented us with a large amount of dust and was definitely needed for a clean. And to finalise our upgrades, I added in our new hard drive, a max to fireball 30GB drive. Now while this is a bigger capacity compared to the stock 17 gigs it would have come with, Smaller size drives are ironically getting harder to find these days, and more expensive compared to their newer, larger IDE counterparts. To mount it, I had to use some screws from an AIO cooler, as they seemed to be the only thing that I could get all the way through the front of the case. And to finish us off, I reassembled all the plastics, including the side panel and front panel, where we could see our finished, cleaned product. we have our shiny and clean machine, it's time to get an OS installed. 
Now at first I plan to install the original OS this system will have come with, Windows 98 that is, but after multiple driver issues with the hardware of this system, I gave up and moved on to the much more stable Windows 2000, which installed without any issues. So I originally planned to end this video on some benchmarks, but because we're running a pretty weak graphics card, I mean 3D Mark wouldn't even launch, that's how bad the MX400 is. But I did get some footage of the original release of Half-Life running in software mode, which was, well, interesting to watch. I also have a few finishing touches that were added towards the end of this series. I actually discovered that I already own an identical Toshiba drive that was already in the machine, so I decided to add that for a bit of symmetry. So there's only one way to close out this video and that's to say thank you all very much for watching this little journey of me restoring an old computer again. Like and subscribe if you did enjoy it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.